Look what I've got, Arturia Astrolab. This might be the stage keyboard you've been waiting all your life for. Got a little conversation with a little bit of patience and a whole lot of waiting for you. Ooh, ooh. I'm a well, this time it's a fully standalone instrument uh, with a semi weighted keyboard, uh, five octaves, uh, macro controllers, built in effects, uh, built in audio in for processing uh, external sound, also mic in for using with vocoder, MIDI in, MIDI out, and Bluetooth and Wi Fi pairing. Also, it's a two-part instrument. You can create keyboard splits and you can connect a few pedal controllers. Astrolab is a unique instrument because it has all kinds of sounds you might want uh, on a stage. Like electric pianos. but also organs uh, if you need them. And also beautiful basses like this one. So there are emula emulations of Juno, uh, you know, Prophet, Bukla, Fairlight, and beautiful keys, beautiful pads. And a huge potential in sound design because you can use micro movements and lots of effects. So when you press power on button, it takes about 25 seconds uh, for the instruments to fully boot up, but taking into account how powerful those instruments inside are, I don't think it's a, it's a long time. I remember most hardware samplers actually needed several seconds to boot up and then another one minute or so to load the projects. I think, uh, well, it's actually the same with modern groove boxes. And here you can instantly play instruments. And look, this is quite a complex patch actually. So, when you try to reload an instrument, it might take a second, uh, but in most cases, almost instantaneous. So you won't notice it. So it's like uh, changing patches on your workstation from the 90s or something using Wavetable. Most instruments are super powerful, so I don't think uh, this loading time would be a problem. So it works really well. And even complex patches using arpeggiated sounds and samples are loaded pretty fast. I also noticed that uh, after a while the loading time gets shorter. Maybe it's because some instruments actually stay in the memory. You can also see the CPU usage. In most cases you'll have like 30-40%. Uh, it also depends on the polyphony and how many voices you want to play at the same time. But actually, in case of pianos uh, or acoustic uh, grand, there is no problem to play like 40 sounds, 40 voices at once. And it, it works the same with electric pianos. And this is also quite a demanding physical modeling here. I actually noticed that uh, in case of most demanding patches, most demanding instruments like uh, some super uh, elaborate complex uh, pigments patches, you could get like 70-75% of CPU load, but uh, there was never a crackle, never, uh, you know, uh, never any interruption in sound, so it works flawlessly, but sometimes the, the polyphony is uh, limited to a few voices. I'm not sure if it's limited in the patch itself or, you know, the CPU limits it, but it works quite flawlessly actually, and, uh, you know, there is never any, any artifacts in the sound. So when I think about hardware analog synthesizers where polyphony was li usually limited to six or four voices, here you've got usually much more. 
Astrolab is equipped with five octave keyboard. The keys are velocity sensitive and they also have channel aftertouch. Uh, you know, semi-weighted keyboard, piano shaped, very nice to play all kinds of synthesizer sounds and also electric pianos. I could feel I've got enough control over the pianos. Uh, electric pianos for acoustic piano players, well, it's a bit on the light side, but on the other hand, you can play really fast, for instance, organ passages, so that's really cool. Maybe they will make, uh, you know, 88 version in the future, I don't know, uh, but for now, this is really a pleasure to play on this keyboard. Uh, it is not too loud, it is also has nice damping to it, uh, and it's not too springy, so I like it. I'll try to explain it to you in one minute how it all works. So why Astrolab is so special? It's special because you can actually use the, all virtual instruments from Arturia within Astrolab. And you can even see, you know, the graphics here. So it's really, really cool. Uh, Arturia specializes in uh, producing different uh, software instruments, uh, including replicas of famous ones like uh, the Minimook to be free or free from Roland, uh, Corcom S20, uh, there is also Uno, Jupiter, Emulator, Melotron and other instruments. But if you just want one, you can buy one instrument and you can launch it on your computer. You just have to set up your audio interface, connect the MIDI keyboard and you're ready to go. And all those instruments can also work as plugins in your favorite DAW, like Ableton Live. However, if you want all instruments, you have to buy so-called uh, V Collection. And V Collection is basically a set of all those instruments, except uh, for uh, pigments, which is really special, and I'll talk about it later. But that's not all. Arturia also cre created uh, so-called Analog Lab, which actually is hosting uh, those instruments. So you can use it to browse presets from different instruments. So I'll show it to you now. Uh, so you can launch it as a plugin too, and it looks like this. So once you enter the browser, you actually can see all instruments you have here, and you can browse by type, by uh, preset, and once you choose something, you can just click and load an instrument. And it's really cool, uh, and having the basic Analog Club uh, version, you're getting about 1,000 instruments, same here with Astrolab, so Astrolab is kind of hosting Analog Lab inside, I would say, but if you're having, uh, but if you have a full V collection or pigments, you actually will see the presets also here. So you'll see not 1,000, but several thousand uh, presets. And you'll also be able to edit uh, the instrument in detail. But if you don't have any instruments uh, only on the Analog Lab or on the Astrolab with Analog Lab, you just will see uh, the basic macro here. So this is actually how it works here. So having Astrolab and Analog Lab, you'll have uh, access to macros and effects and basic editing. But if you buy a full version of an instrument or a V collection or pigments, then you'll be able to edit those sounds or you know create them from the ground up and then transfer them here. So this is basically the difference. So look, I connected my Astrolab to the computer and uh, now I can play Analog Lab and Astrolab at the same time. So the signal appears uh, both here on the outputs and on the output of this uh, app actually. So this is kind of a full integration and I'll show you how it works now. So everything I do here, like changing a preset, uh, is reflected in the app. Look, there's a Black Forest uh, uh, preset now. And uh, going here, I can also edit the sound if I have a full version of the instrument and all works because uh, my instrument is uh, linked to the analog lab now. So Astrap linked, there's a new button here and it all and it simply means that uh, there's a full uh, communication, two-way communication between the hardware and uh, the software. So now when I choose edit preset here, I can just go here, open an instrument because I have a full version of it and now I can for instance change the models and the sound will change on the output of the plugin and on, on the output of uh, Astrolab. Yeah, so it really works uh, wonderfully. 
And for instance, uh, if I choose a different preset now, I can uh, do it uh, from here. So I could, you know, click here and of course it will change here too, as you can see. But I can also uh, do it uh, here uh, using the keyboard and I'm just looking for uh, some kind of hybrid sound. I think uh, this might be interesting to to find such a hybrid here. Yeah, this this looks nice. So there's a pad emerging underneath here now. So basically I could go and edit uh, this preset in detail, edit uh, this instrument uh, because I have a full version of it. Uh, and uh, also I can edit uh, effects. But uh, looking at the main screen, there are some macros here. And of course I can access them here. And effects. Currently it says stereo pan, but of course I can uh, go here and change uh, those effects to chorus for instance and now when you look here there of course will be chorus so it works really nice and of course you have some more useful parameters here nevertheless if you have full versions of instruments or not uh, they are usually uh, dependent on uh, the model so in case of synthesizers uh, you're usually getting uh, some envelope parameters. Here you have uh, frequency modulation, envelope attack, decay release. Uh, and sometimes you have filters here. And if you look at uh, some more traditional instruments or electro-acoustical ones, uh, there probably would be some parameters uh, regarding uh, resonance, synthetic resonance or uh, release time, hammer noise, etc. So there is a full-blown two-way communication between hardware and software and it works uh, really, really nice. Uh, I've got uh, kind of pre-release versions, so there are still some small bugs. I cannot turn on some effects sometimes or, uh, or there are sometimes uh, some errors uh, when creating uh, splits, but I'm pretty sure that they will fix it uh, tomorrow before the release. So uh, yeah, like they did with all other instruments earlier. And I'm kind of used to that style of working because I also have uh, Minifreak and uh, they are adding uh, a plugin that is a uh, 100 replication of the Minifreak and it also works the same. So you link the instrument to the plugin and basically your plugin becomes an instrument and the instrument becomes a controller. So it's a wonderful uh, solution. So Astrolab comes with 1,000 presets, but actually uh, V-Collection comes with more than uh, 10,000 presets, I guess. And uh, you can't, uh, you know, copy and paste them all automatically. They won't synchronize, but what you can do, you can just copy them to your Astrolab. Uh, and it works quite flawlessly. You can just choose the presets coming from a bank, like this liquid extraction. I love this drum and bass uh, pads you can just go here and drag it to your library. And once the process is finished, all those 112 sounds, sounds patches, will be available directly from your instrument. The instrument also comes with a phone application. All you need to do is pair the devices with each other. Connecting to a Wi-Fi network is not necessary here, so we just scan the code and then we wait a while. And when the process is successful, we will be able to view and load presets from the application itself, which may sometimes be a bit faster or more convenient. Now I can browse presets by looking at their thumbnails and I can also change presets easily. As you can see, I can also select presets depending on the bank they come from. In case of Arturia extensions that I recognize automatically, like Liquid Expansion. Here you can see the presets that I have just placed in the device's memory using the drag and drop method. You can also create and browse playlists using the app.
The instrument can also be connected to a phone via Bluetooth, which allows for example to play music through the instrument from the phone, but bypassing effects. I am sitting back against the door. I can hear you laugh, resonate behind that door. You don't even see me when she is there. I could disappear, you wouldn't even care. There is an arpeggiator on board too, pretty basic one though. To access its settings, just hold down the R button. There is also There is also a chord generator and here are a few more options. Of course, you can enter your own chord if you like. However, for some reason, I couldn't combine arpeggiator with the chord mode, and I don't know why. You can also select scales, then sounds belonging to a certain musical scale, are marked with diodes on the keyboard and sounds not belonging to a given musical scale are sort of quantized to the scale. I chose F harmonic minor to illustrate this. Pressing the shift and back button simultaneously takes us to the instrument settings. We can browse presets by more categories, by instrument, or by artist. We'll find here, among others, sounds from songs by Daft Punk, which sound phenomenal. Anyway, listen for yourself. In addition, we can also like presets. I also noticed that some presets are sample based and there are references to the SFZ format. I'm not sure if the manufacturer will officially open the system to this format. Uh, if so, we could create our own drum kits uh, or any kind of patches based on our own sound samples. If you have purchased additional preset libraries, they will appear on the list here. We will also have our own playlist here. As part of playlists, we can save presets that we intend to use in subsequent songs during live performances. Interestingly, the general settings also include a limiter that prevents possible sound distortion at the instrument's audio outputs. You can also connect an external medium and configure Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. When it comes to MIDI, here we can define the MIDI channel from which information for the first and second part uh, is sent or received. And of course, set the keyboard sensitivity and define the task of the connected foot controllers. Well, Astrolab uh, claims to solve a few problems of musicians playing live on stage, and I think it actually does. I am going to show you how. In the past, I have faced several problems. I usually have to take at least two different instruments to live performances. Astrolab solves this problem because it is a two-part instrument. Therefore, I can select the first instrument, let it be a Rhodes electric piano, and after pressing the part two button, I can select the second instrument. Let it be some kind of synthesizer. Now all I have to do is set the appropriate volume, add some effects, 
and divide the keyboard according to my preferences. Arturia also solves the problem of uh, raw sounds. You've got four effect box here, two insert effects, chorus and stereo pan here, and you can change the intensity by pressing shift. Also, set effects, delay and reverb with adjustable decay and time. And also, if you press shift and choose one of, one of the effects, you can change the algorithm and set its parameters. And all these can be set on top of the built-in effects in each instrument. So here's my summary and recommendation. I actually made some notes and I, I have 10 points I would like to share with you. So point one, I think it's a perfect timing, perfect moment for this instrument because software emulations reached excellent sound quality, especially Arturias. Uh, for a very long time I was not convinced with many other uh, emulations. I actually did not like very much first Arturias Minimook and first Arturias electric piano, uh, but quite recently Minimook 4 version appeared and it has this analog mojo. It really sounds the way it should from the beginning. Also, the electric pianos, uh, uh, when the stage 73 second version appeared, I actually thought it sounded so great and so authentic that I sold my Cork SV1 stage piano, a hardware one, because I you know, I thought I just need this because it sounds better. So it's a perfect moment and uh, those instruments sound really, uh, really great. Some of them I think might sound even better than uh, most hardware instruments. So this is pretty cool. Second point, uh, uh, well, most efforts to build hardware that could run software instruments uh, ended with various limitations like polyphony effects or long loading times. Here we have really quick startup and reloading of sounds like classic digital synthesizers. So despite much more extensive instruments architecture, they load pretty quickly, like, you know, 20 seconds to boot up and less than one second to, uh, less than one second to load next uh, preset. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Third point, Arturia has a huge advantage through modeling. Uh, compared to other instruments based on classic technologies, in particular sampling and wavetable, which applies to many Yamaha or Roland workstations, most of Arturia's instruments that are inside here uh, actually are based on physical modeling technology, which simply gives greater uh, manipulation possibilities. So uh, we do not operate on samples of a hammer when you think about piano, uh, but actually um, we can change physical properties of the hammer or, or, or strings because they are described by mathematical formulas. So we can, for example, detune the piano or change the hardness of uh, metal bars of an electric piano. So this makes it easier to obtain the sound of different models of the same instrument or even colors quite different from original ones. Fourth, uh, S-Lab is, you know, really well equipped with different presets, so I don't think you will miss anything uh, buying just Astrolab. But if you have uh, Arturia's virtual instruments, Analog Lab becomes a wonderful editor. Uh, so you can enlarge it and it, it, it looks pretty, pretty cool. And uh, one more thing here, and this is where Pigments in particular stands out uh, as a super synthesizer. So. Uh, if you're thinking of buying uh, any instruments, consider pigments because uh, you have a V collection and 30, 40, 50 different instruments and then you have pigments. 
and pigments actually uses uh, different filters, different effects that were created for those emulations. So pigments is like a super synthesizer that can almost do it all. So pigments is, uh, is a cool one. Uh, five, the great advantage of Astrolab as a solution is th that you can take the sounds of your favorite virtual instruments, the preset you use in your projects, on stage. So just copy them by drag and drop and bam, you're done. Uh, seven, seven. Personally, I don't think that the, the app, the, the phone app is really necessary. I think the presets can be browsed, browsed effectively from the instrument itself, so it works pretty well. Uh, eight. On the minus side, I would say that the chord and the ARP functionality is pretty basic. Maybe they will make it more complex in the firmware update, but for now it's just, you know, simple ARP. I, I don't really think I will be using it. Uh, nine, uh, the gain range of the inputs could be slightly larger, uh, which could be useful when working with a dynamic microphone. Uh, I connected the microphone and I felt that I could use a little bit more gain. And also there were no indications or, and, or information uh, on the screen about the level. I could not change you know, from mic to line. So yeah, I don't know, maybe you can uh, you know, edit the vocoder itself and then uh, make it work a little bit better. But I think the gain range could be, uh, could be greater. And uh, then, uh, yeah, I think that there might be some another Astrolab in the future because there is still a lot of space here. I think they could they could have put here 15 encoders and because there is still place. But other than that, I also understand that this is a perfect uh, combination with Analog Lab and this whole ecosystem works uh, very, very stable and it's very concise, very well fit together. I don't know the English word for it. Anyway, I just think it's a great instrument, uh, it's a great time for it, and uh, if you buy it, I think you'll be very, very happy. So, strong recommendation, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you watched this far. Uh, I hope to be back to you pretty soon.